I thought the script on first reading was just, it's a, it's a, I, it doesn't reduce it by saying this. It kind of, for me, enhances it. It's such a lovely, feel-good, compassionate, sweet, heart-rendering story about Ada Harris and her, her journey to go to Paris to get herself a Dior dress. It's, it's very charming. And there's a kind of phrase that's been coined about it, which I think is rather good. It's like a musical without the music, you know, it's... And hopefully, you know, when the film gets released, the world will be ready for a really lovely, heartwarming film like this. It's really lovely. And I've been able to, you know, create Ada um, I mean, it, the, the period, the late 50s is a period I know quite well. I've done quite a few jobs actually dealing with that period. So all of that I kind of knew and understood about that time. Um, and, you know, Ada is a woman that I recognise from my, well, my later childhood, not it, more in the 60s. Um, you know, I remember characters like her in, in, in our life, in my family's life. Um, and yeah, so she's, a, she's been a lovely character to create. Ada is a, a, a cleaner living in London, in Battersea, and her husband has been missing in the war, presumed dead, although she's never had it confirmed that he's dead. And early on in the film, that confirmation comes. Um, and that kind of links up with her, one of the ladies she cleans for, Lady Dant, has in her wardrobe a beautiful Dior dress. And this dress just captures Ada's imagination. Ada is, uh, she's, you know, the glass is half full. She's spirited, she's, she's joyous, she's humorous, she's honest and fair, but she's a very, she's very game, you know, she's very, um, open um, and that's a very nice thing to play because it's um, it's been it's been such it's been such fun I mean we were filming the um, the the scenes in the Moulin Rouge yesterday when when the Marquis takes her for a night out and of course she's She's never done anything like that. And she's drinking champagne and eating caviar and she's dancing the cha-cha-cha and the mumba. You know, it's, it's just thrilling. But, you know, she's, she's um, so kind of open to all of that kind of uh, opportunity and chance and um, serendipity, you know. It's so it's, it's just delightful. It's been good working with Anthony, yeah. I mean, obviously he's had this, this film in his back pocket for quite some time. So, you know, he came with lots of uh, ideas and um, uh, a clarity, uh, but he's certainly assembled a great team. And for me, that's been, been what I need because I, you know, I don't like, working in isolation. I don't like working out my performance at home alone and coming in. You know, I want, I do like it if it can be a collaboration. Ada is very um, meticulous about her, her, how she looks. You know, she may not have money for clothes, but she's always very well put together and she's very neat and clean and tidy. And even when she goes to work, you know, she, she'll go to bed with her pink curls so that when she takes them out and she's putting a scarf over her head to go to work, she still looks put together, you know. It's not slovenly or ill-kept, it's, it's neat and precise. Um, so I, I, it, it was, I was kind of influenced by by my mother and how my mother used to look later than that, my memory of her, but from photographs, um, I do, I, yeah, it was very, it was very good to kind of recall how she used to look. But the team here have been, you know, amazing, pulling it all together and getting the looks right, and it's been wonderful. And the cast has been amazing. I mean, 
just to work with Isabel and Lambert has been really, really terrific and very exciting working with both of them. And, you know, they're both very funny. We've had nice times off screen. Um, uh, Jason and Ellen, I didn't know, hadn't worked with. Um, but again, you know, they, they've brought so much to those characters and it's just been brilliant. I mean, spot on casting. Um, and the newbies, you know, Lucas, Lucas Bravo and Alba Baptista, I mean, they're just wonderful, wonderful young actors, you know, at the beginning of their careers. Um, so it's been really, really good to work with them and spend time with them, hang out with them. And th yeah, they're lovely and they're both really, you know, they're really on their way. The friendship between Vi and Ada is really very fundamental one for, for Ada and for Vi, you know, they are each other's lifeline, you know, they're both these single vibrant women. Um, and I think also that, you know, the, I, I hope this film will appeal, I think it will, because, you know, we're in, we've been in a time in the last 10 years when, when the balance has been changing of films that are made about older women. Um, uh, and there's clearly a box office for that. There's a market for that. There's a desire and a need for that, where women are being represented better than they were. It's a film that's a bit of an escapist film. It's, it's, it's going to be really beautiful to watch. Um, aesthetically beautiful to watch. Um, the performances are going to be, I think, the ones I've looked, the ones I've seen, are going to be just spot on and moving and clever and funny and witty. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think we might have made. I hope we've made um, what will become a little classic gem. What I want audiences to take away from Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is joy. A real, a real sense of this, this woman, Ada, who's just really had this dream and gone for it and done everything within her power. You know, she's a little... She's like a little Duracell battery, Ada is. She's always on the go and she's, she's a driving force. And I want them to, to take away joy from watching this character. I thought that the, the story was really um, um, interesting. It's a comedy, of course, uh, but it's also, there is a certain depth uh, in it and uh, each character have a, a journey and uh, uh, it's funny, it's light, but it's also very deep. And uh, 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 it's a little bit social also, and so also a little bit political, and it says a lot about uh, what it means for women, what fashion means for women, but what also it means uh, for women to, to make women happier and, uh, and to, give, to give them the the possibility, you know, so it, it's, uh, fashion is a, is a world of, of dream most of the time, but it's also all of a sudden through uh, Mrs. Harris' vision and sense of reality, it makes it also less dream. It's, it's, it becomes more accessible. It's about this Mrs. Harris' journey and, and uh, her fascination for the world of fashion and her, uh, great and deep desire to have this dress as a, as a symbol of elegance, of beauty, of, of uh, all sorts of things that she doesn't, she's not really surrounded with, you know, because she's a, a worker. She, she comes from another world. Mrs. Colbert is a very interesting character because she's, she's a double character. She, she seems to be what she is, and in fact, she runs the house, and she's, she can be really tough, and she can be... But then, uh, I don't want to unveil the end, but you, you find out someone else behind this facade, which is also, also, always very 
rewarding for an actress to play. Anthony is really um, very pleasant to work with. He's, he's very, very sensitive and intuitive and he's very quiet and very calm and, uh, and it's a, it's a, yeah, there are a lot of people so it's not so easy to put, put all these people together and to organize this choreography because most of the time, yes, we are uh, many people on set and, and uh, uh, he's always very quiet, very much in command and, and, and very, much, very much in tune with everybody's um, everybody's um, whatever everybody has to do. So it's, it's, uh, it, we have a great confidence in him. Leslie, of course, I knew her as a wonderful actress. She's, she's really a, a great, great actress. And so it's quite interesting to see her uh, building up her character. And uh, of course, our relationship is sometimes a bit tough and uh, with many, many ages, but it's really, uh, everything is, the, the, all the nuances are there. And, uh, and I, I, the cast is really wonderful because um, I had imagined all sorts of different people around all these characters and, and, and I have to say everybody's just ideal, whether it's Lambert, for, or Lambert Wilson for the Marquis de Chassagne or the younger uh, Alba for Natasha and, uh, and Guylaine Londes for Madame um, Avalon and, uh, um, and, and Roxane Durand for um, uh, Marguerite and, and, and it really reflects and a, a great, great um, insight about all the characters. Well, because of the situation, we, 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 uh, our conversations were mainly over uh, like Zoom conversations, but it was enough to imagine uh, the character of Madame Colbert and, uh, and, uh, and I, I love all the beautiful dresses uh, I wear. I, maybe some of them are, are from Dior. I'm not quite sure about this, but they're all period dresses and uh, so... Uh, elegant and and uh, and Jenny has such an eye to really decide. I mean, we know who she is and decide what's good for what scene and so ever. So it was really great. Yes, Mrs. Harris. You know, she she has a dream and she achieves her dream, but she doesn't only achieve it for herself. Meantime, she changes a lot of people's fate and destiny, which is the beauty of the story. They should definitely see the film in cinema because cinema is big. Cinema is the big screen. Cinema, uh, as uh, great Jean-Luc Godard would say, you have to raise your head to watch movies instead of <laughs> putting it down. And uh, uh, that's, for me, the love of cinema, of course. I love Andre. I, I, I think he's a love-driven character, which, which I love. Uh, I always start working from a place of love and then try to see how the wounds and uh, the education and the scars are, are making this love disformed and twisted and how it brings the characters the, the characters to life but it's, it's generally just a really um, lovable person he just loves what he does he does it with a um, with drive and um, and the fact that it's just um, so so um, you know, shy about this love for Natasha. I, I just, I can relate to that. It's this shy, you know, teenage, I don't want to bother kind of love. The story of the film is a fish out of water story um, about how someone from another perspective can bring the tools uh, to, to, to a new reality. The, all the people at Dior are, you know, in their reality and their they they're working on, on on things that they've been working on for years and they don't see the outside aspect of things anymore and the fact that Ada is just coming to give them a fresh perspective and uh, just uh, tear down their judgments about social statuses and everything is um, that's that's what the movie is about I think uh, cultural nuances and love and passion and it's all in there. Andre's best quality is also his worst quality. It's, it's, it's that he's, he's very, very discreet and subtle and shy. 
which is in line of in his line of work, uh, it, it can be good because he's you know he's doing his job, he's not bothering anyone, and at the same time, uh, nobody notices him, especially the person he loves. So um, he doesn't have the strength to come up to her and, and show that he actually exists, and uh, so that that is his quality and and his default. I started uh, reading a lot. Um, biographies about Dior in the 50s, uh, autobiographies from Christian himself, um, models from the 50s, um, and just, you know, the politic uh, in the country back then, looking at pictures of styles and ideas and, you know, everything that was going on back then to just get a glimpse of, of the atmosphere. Um, and then I just started to get into, get into Andre. What does he? What does he like? What does he eat? What does, what does he read? Working with Tony is is just a blast. He's he's such a, a sweet person. He's he's just so uh, patient and he listen. He listens. He's um he's, he's he's so driven by the story. He's in love with his characters and with the story. And uh, it's it's just so good to have someone who's just you know um, driving this this huge production in with, with with love he's just in love with everything the, the way he reacts to seeing the funny scenes just just you know cracking up uh, in the behind the screen and then just when he comes to us to give us directions it's it's just he's, he's here it's just considerate and we feel uh, safe we feel safe to try things and to to bring our characters to life he's a very passionate director working with with Jenny Biven is um, how can I describe this? It's 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 crazy. She's uh, she's so colorful. She's uh, so funny, so alive, and she's uh, also she's an encyclopedia of fashion. She knows she knows everything about everything. And so, just you know, with the COVID situation and everything, we weren't really able to um, try before I got to Budapest. So once in Budapest, we, we had a selection and we worked together and she's, you know, this tie, this thing, this, and she knows so much about what happened in the fifties that she was basically giving me heads up and stories and, and things that were happening back then that would influence the style <clears throat> in terms of character. What color would he wear? Um, cause he's shy and nerdy. What, what this and that, and it's, it's, uh, it's very rich and there's a lot of uh, tools to work with. So, um, so then when the costume is ready, you just feel very confident in, in, in your character's skin, which is very important. Working with this uh, amazing ensemble of talents uh, is, has been uh, uh, one of the best experiences of my life. It's, it's amazing to come to set to such inspiring um, icons. And, and, you know, it's hard to dissociate the fact that you saw them everywhere and you've been inspired and by their performances in different projects. And so um, the way they welcomed me on set, uh, they're, they're, it's so human and, and easy and uh, they make it effortless to just make it bring that family atmosphere. And, and I think we love each other very much and it's the best way to work. I hope it allows people to just, you know, escape, reconnect with, love, melancholy, fashion, um, history, and, and just the magical world that Christian, that Christian Draw started um, so many years ago. And it's, it's pretty amazing that his history and passion and drive is uh, still giving us the ability to make people dream and travel and escape. So I really hope uh, if the world uh, is better, then I really hope it will be a great opportunity to, you know, dream a little. People should see this movie on the big screen because it's the only place where you actually can feel the performance and the emotions and, and really get into details. And, you know, love is in the details. And um, it, it's, it's just so great to be in a cinema just with your popcorn and just having an audience to react to whatever you're seeing. And since it's also a comedy, um, you need that drive. You need to be enjoying this. It's a, 
It's a community movie. The film is about this woman who's brave enough to actually put her life on hold to aim to dream bigger and to follow her dreams and to create new ones as well and um, search for a new reality, which is brave. Natasha, my character, she is uh, one of the models um, of uh, Dior. She's the, at the moment when we find her in the film, she is the face of the Dior um, house. Um, so she's, she's, she's have, she, she has quite a reputation amongst Dior um, and the high class. Um, however, she does struggle with um, existential questions and life choices, as I mentioned before where she wonders uh, if this is the right path she took. And Natasha is, a, is, a, is such a beautiful and dense character to me because there's such a mystery behind her. And this is what Tony and I want to really um, transpire, is the mystery behind her. Where does she come from? Uh, how did she get there? Is she French? Is she, where, 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 where is she? Who is she? And um, that's for the spectator to, to create their own conclusions, which is beautiful. I was very nervous about that scene, and I think it's the big scene of the film in terms of just, uh, you know, for all departments, it was a big, big scene. <laughs> so, um, and they've been talking about the scene for years. Uh, so there's a big responsibility and weight to it. Um, and of course, we did train with a choreographer. I did my own research. I kind of dove deep into, uh, just becoming her uh, before a couple of days before the, the scene um, with my hands, with my feet, with the way I walk, with my hips and everything, because it's so different uh, how models walk nowadays in comparison to the 50s. Um, it was all about the dress back then, I think, and, and to truly sell a dress in, in, in its utmost grace, it's, it's a big challenge. It's harder than it looks. But uh, we did have rehearsals um, with the dresses and the models were fantastic, all of them. They did such a good job, such a good job. Most of the dresses for the show were made uh, exclusively for, for me, so I only got to try them on like a week before the shoot. Um, but Jenny just has a vision. Even if, even if you don't know what's going on, you can feel safe that she does. And uh, that's, that's just the best way to work. Tony is just such a, such a kind and loving human being and it just transpires through his work. Um, he uh, wants to be involved with every department on set and make everyone feel comfortable and, and, and this is a big shoot. This, there's a lot of uh, you know, things to handle and he's, he's, he's doing it very well. Um, I, think, I think we're all very lucky and, and he, he's the perfect person to do this film um, and to give it justice and, and truth. And it, it, yeah, it's, a, it's an honor to have met him and to have worked with him. It's truly an honor. Leslie is a vision of an actress and, and she, she is just so, so incredibly beautifully kind as a human being as well. Um, and as an actress, of course. Uh, but it's so effortless, you know, watching her is such an inspiration because she doesn't have an entire process where, she's, where she excludes herself from the world. No, she, she's so connected with everyone and, and, that's, and, and she, she's given me so many amazing advices that I'll take for life and just, I, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for her. With Lucas, obviously, we're like the kids of the, <laughs> the shoot, so, um, We've become amazing friends, and and I think we we're very much alike in our ambitions and our in our um, uh, uh, requirements as actors and what we want to become and uh, our expectations and everything. So we're hard on each other and we lift each other up, which is wonderful. Shooting on the Dior set that is the exact replica of the former Dior house. Um, is pretty magical, truly. Uh, it, it's just so perfectly imitated and 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 created. Um, and you do you do if you if you allow yourself to get lost in, in the set, it, it 
it kind of you enter this twilight zone of, of actually almost believing that you are in the 50s and then you look around and all of the extras look perfect and beautiful and the details are fantastic. I truly hope that the world goes and goes and see this film because it's it's so special and it will make you feel good after you leave um, the cinema and after such a bumpy year I think we all deserve to have these little moments where we can escape and this this is a film where you can truly escape and 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 smile and and feel <laughs> feel love for for your main character and all of the other characters. In your own words, it's about dreaming, it's about inspiration, it's about um, setting a dream and then making it happen. And I think that with all the challenges that we have at the moment in the world, um, it's a very inspiring film. You've set your mind to doing something and it's something wonderful and something good, then follow your heart. It is. It's a perfect love story about following your heart. I think we all need to do a little bit more of that now. Vi probably came to England because the, um, the British government invited people from the Caribbean, people from Africa, to come and fight for the mother country. And so I see Vi as one of those women that decided, right, I'm going to fight for the mother country. I'm going to go to England. And it was a big deal back then to go to England. And it's like, you've made it. You know, um, in the Caribbean and in Africa, we had the impression that the streets were paved with gold going to the mother country. So I can imagine Vi's um, excitement. I'm going to England and she came, she did her bit for the war effort. And that's how she met Ada. They were building planes um, during the Second World War. I think that's amazing. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's so rare in a British movie to actually see a character like Vi, because we know that in, the, in reality, those women were there working in the factories. Um, and some of them were in the Royal Air Force, in the WAFs or WEFs, whichever one is called. And they played their part majorly in the Second World War. So I'm really happy that we're exploring Vi's character in Ada's story. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I was a huge fan of Leslie Manville's before the film. Um, most people have seen her in Mum and then in Harlots and everything else. And a huge fan of hers. And so it was a little bit nervous at the beginning. And then I found out that she's a sweetie. So I was like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Oh, I love Anthony. Um, I love the character that he's created for Vi. And I think it's... It's basically his idea to make Vi Caribbean because he recognized that um, the contribution of the African and the Caribbean women to the Second World War and relations and friendships um, was huge, was a huge thing. And I think it was his idea to actually have Vi, uh, Vi Butterfield as a woman from the Caribbean, yeah. So I'm so, so grateful to him for that. You know, and once the movie's out, lots of people are going to be really grateful that, you know, these two women from two different parts of the world become really close friends. The first time I met Jenny Bevan for costume fitting, lovely sunny day in London, and um, I had a little deja vu moment. Um, my father was in the Royal Air Force and he was stationed in Germany at one point. And so when my mum first went over to Germany, there were all these photos that she sent to her children. And there's a photo of my mum wearing a jacket, very similar to the one that Vi wears. And even now I'm thinking about it, I get really emotional. Um, I just thought, oh my goodness, I said, Jenny, you'll never believe what's happened. I've got a photo of my mum in a jacket similar to this in the 50s. So. That's the experience. And it feels like I'm a 50s kind of girl, a 1950s girl, because I really like the fashions, and the fashions really suit me for curvy women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was lovely to work with, really lovely to work with. Yeah, very easy. I'm really hoping that audiences take away following your heart. Um, that there's something that you really want to do that your heart is telling you do this, I say follow it, because it's going to lead you to whatever your gift to the world is, really. And that's exactly what Ada does in Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. She follows her heart. Oh my goodness, audiences must see this film on the big screen. 
the fashion alone is amazing and it deserves to be seen on the big screen. Oh my goodness, love fashion? See this film on the big screen. And you're gonna get Paris, you're gonna get Budapest for London. You have to see it on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. And you have to see it with an audience so that you can all share. It's a shared experience. It's not the same on television. It's not the same, definitely not. You have to see it with an audience so that you can all laugh and cry together. <laughs> I wanted to do the film because I wanted to work with Anthony, who I knew. But I read the script and it was just unlike anything that people are making because it's so warm and uncynical and uh, I don't, it seems like the perfect antidote to the times that we live in. It was a tribute to optimism in some ways and uh, the resilience of the human spirit. And um, what else? Uh, I felt the story was the perfect story for our times. It just felt like uh, it was a can-do thing and it celebrated uh, the unseen and um, invisible people who make our lives happen. And is there anything more pertinent to our times? It's the story of a woman and her strength of belief and the, uh, the innocence and beauty of her hope, really, in some ways. Mrs. Harris, Ada to me, uh, believes that she deserves better and she deserves the best. And just because she's uh, an undereducated cleaning woman doesn't mean that she can't have and realize the dreams of anybody else on the planet. And it's a, it's a tribute to her and anybody like that. I play Archie, who's a bookie. He's a, a big neighborhood character. He's friendly with Ada and her mate Vi. He's friendly with everybody, actually. And he's a bit of a ladies' man. The thing about Leslie, and one of the reasons she's such a great actress, is that there's such detail and subtlety in everything that she does. Uh, and so, although off camera I was a little bit intimidated for about five minutes just by her, uh, how in awe of her I was, uh, her Ada is so complex and so rich and so exquisite and, and beautiful in her self-belief and her self-doubt married. Um, that it's very, very hard not to lean in and fall in love with her. Some directors like to stay distant and, and direct from an ivory tower. Anthony wants to be involved, he wants to know everybody, texting everybody, he wants to have as many social events as he can. And he directs, uh, he's, a, he's the leader of a group. Uh, he doesn't feel like he's dragging you into his world, he jumps into your world and it's incredibly empowering. He's, Anthony has a, a, a meticulous, slightly obsessive attention to detail that might not serve any other profession so well as it does a director. And you feel very, very safe in his hands. It's a magical era. People just emerging from the austerity of the post-war rationing. And there's a kind of explosion of joy going on, not for everybody and uh, possibly not for Ada unless she busts through it. But the clothes are great, the music is great, and the sense of hope in the air. And, uh, Optimism is rampant. We have the Oscar-winning Jenny Bevan, who I've worked with before as a costume designer. Not only does she have to recreate the greatest dress that's ever made in fashion history, but uh, she's got this fabulous palette to play with. So we had a very, very good time choosing the costumes. It's, it's frustrating only to wear one in each scene. I'd like to do some quick changes. But they're just, they're flamboyant. I'm playing a flamboyant character. He likes to dress on his limited resources. Uh, so I've got a selection of fabulously colored waistcoats. I've got spats on. They look like that. And they're fabulous. Um, and I'm jealous of everybody else in the scenes as well and what they're getting to wear. The film's about achieving your dreams. And it's uh, both a fantasy and a reality. You can achieve anything you put your mind to, hopefully. And even if you don't, the journey is all. The goal is all. Hopefully people take that from our story. Something magical and intangible happens in a big dark room when we're told a story together. We feel less alone. We see some truthful human behavior on the screen, whether it makes us laugh or scream or just feel part of a common cause. It doesn't happen when you watch things by yourself. We need to gather in groups. We always have, and hopefully we always will. The film is warm and uncynical and funny and, uh, 
moving, and you'll believe. You'll believe in the power of human beings to push through and be the best version of themselves. And how many stories do that? The death of Mrs. Harris's husband, in a way, is the springboard for the story because suddenly she's no longer waiting for somebody and she's, as she puts it, footloose in fancy free. And immediately after she learns of her husband's death, she comes across this couture dress by Christian Dior and it revolutionizes her life. I think if it had happened at any other moment, it may not have had the same effect on her, but at that emotional moment that it happens, it has a huge seismic effect on her. The Ada effect, if you like, which is one in which people begin to reveal themselves, is one of the key elements of the story. And I think it comes from the fact that she herself is a very authentic character, that she's very sure of who she is, she knows who she is, and she's not trying to pretend to be someone else. Um, many of the other characters in the film are wearing masks in a way which she unmasks through her presence and through her example. A lot of Ada's journey in the film is going from that invisibility to finding out who she, what she truly wants, who she truly is, and finding her own agency. So she goes from somebody who seems relatively happy with life but isn't pursuing anything particularly uh, challenging to achieving the almost impossible, which is to buy a dress that's way beyond her means. And that dress becomes uh, a catalyst to this transformation in her where she's not only seen because she's wearing a beautiful dress, she's seen because she has gained in confidence, she has gained in stature, and she's really achieved something, and she's uh, changed the lives of so many people around her. The beauty of this story is that it shows a woman who, despite her circumstances, despite her background and her class, decides to throw everything aside and pursue her dream. And by going to another country, she's also able to remove a lot of the strictures, the social strictures that she's experienced back home. So that's one of the joys of travel, is that you can reinvent yourself and be another person. So part of the reason her adventure has to happen in another country and another culture is that it enables her to, to be a, a fuller part of herself without that self-criticism of, oh, I can only be at this level or, or this level, because that's how I grew up. So she's able to throw away some of the class prejudices that she's experienced back home. I would say that a good part of my job as a director is to find the right actor for the right part. I mean, once I've done that, my job isn't quite done, but it's a, a fair amount of it is done. And Leslie Manville is an absolute dream for any director to work with. She's incredibly meticulous, incredibly well prepared, very surprising, very funny, very technically brilliant, but also very free. Um, she's one of the most astonishing actresses I've ever worked with. Um, and this part seemed to fit her like a glove. And it was such a natural process watching her discover and, and, and find different nuances within the part. And I think one of the things that was so special about what Leslie brought to it was a multidimensionality to the character. So she isn't just nice and she isn't just kind. She's also sometimes hurt by the way people behave towards her. And she's also incredibly strong. So when she decides to stand up for the workers at Dior, you see a grit and a metal to her that you haven't seen before. So she's able to convey all of these different aspects of the character in an incredibly powerful way. To be able to have France's greatest living actress, Isabelle Huppert, playing the director of Dior is a luxury beyond my imagining. If you like um, the metaphor of striving for the unattainable, um, Isabelle Huppert seemed to me almost striving for the unattainable, for the character of Madame Colbert. And yet there she is on screen in her full glory. And what she brings to the character is a quirkiness and a humor and a kookiness that I never expected. Because you think of Isabelle as quite serious and, and very intellectual. And somehow, without even a discussion, she decided that there was this 
um, slight awkwardness about Madame Colbert, how she walks. There was a very interesting moment when she told me that the shoes that she was wearing were a little bit too big for her and she has these tiny feet. And I was immediately concerned and said, you know, shouldn't we change that? And she said, no, no, I like the way it makes me walk. And, and it even contributes something to that kookiness in her character. Lucas Bravo, everybody knows who Lucas is now because of Emily in Paris, but when I cast him, the show hadn't even been shown yet. In fact, it was aired, I think, the week before we started production, and suddenly his Instagram followers went from zero to a million overnight, uh, which was a bit of a shock to him. But um, I certainly felt the gratification of a discovery. So Luca, Lucas is definitely a, a very special young man with a, a stunning future career um, who I feel we were able to discover very early on in a very pure way. So we didn't cast him because he was a star that would help us get the finance. We cast him because he was absolutely perfect for the role and because he radiates something very intense and very, very pure, which was, which was right for the character, as well as a great ability to tap into his own personal insecurities, which was really important for that role. Alba Batista is another wonderful discovery uh, for this movie. And in my first interview with her, she told me that she was thinking about maybe giving up acting and studying philosophy. Um, and my hairs on the back of my neck went up because, of course, the character of Natasha also is thinking about giving up modeling to study philosophy. And I, I think she wasn't just feeding me a line to get the part. I think she genuinely did feel that. And I think Alba has this, this melancholy and this sadness about her her resting face and her composure that was very well suited to this, to this part. But then when she smiles, the whole room lights up. And again, that was perfect for the role. So she had a lot of the natural qualities that I was looking for in this character. She also has enormous depth, great intelligence. She's a natural linguist. So although she's Portuguese, she speaks good French, very good English, Spanish, German. Uh, so she's, um, she's exactly what I wanted. And what was so important for the character of Natasha was that she be a fish out of water just as Ada is also a fish out of water. So she is not, doesn't entirely fit into this world of Dior, and that's one of the things that brings Ada and Natasha together. Lambert Wilson is that rare thing amongst French actors, somebody who speaks exquisite English. Um, and I was very keen to cast all of the French roles with French actors, again, in the spirit of authenticity, which is essential to the way that we made this film. And Lambert has a natural graciousness, an aristocratic quality, um, and he is so charming. Um, uh, I, I remember hearing a story once about Lambert that if you put him in a room with a chair, he could seduce the chair. Um, and you had to have that quality of seductiveness and charm, but also a certain kind of aloofness, which I think he brings to it. There's a very interesting parallel between Pamela, the actress in London played by Rose Williams, very much in the style of a blonde bombshell, um, and Natasha. And they're both very glamorous young women, but Pamela is all about being seen and Natasha is all about not being seen. So this theme of visibility continues between Pamela and Natasha as well. And they are both playing a sort of daughter role in Ada's life. Uh, Ada has a, a tenderness to, towards both Pamela and Natasha. In one case, you feel it's not entirely earned, and then you discover why. In the other case, it is entirely earned. Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, our version, is very much designed for the cinema. It's a big scale experience. And there are big worlds that you will experience both in London and Paris. Um, there, are, there are exciting scenes at the races, at a cabaret. There's this extraordinary fashion show which is at the heart of the film. And I think there's nothing like the immersive experience of cinema to give you that full experience. So it was really designed for the cinema 
And it would be my greatest joy if people actually see it in the cinema rather than waiting for it to come onto their TV screens. The House of Dior is integral to the film. That's the dress she sees, that's the dress she wants. So my understanding when I took on the project was that Dior were going to do all the Dior elements and I wouldn't be, I would be involved and, and I could have an opinion, but basically Dior would do Dior. But I was invited to go to the archives and um, that was a fantastic outing uh, with the wonderful people who run that. And they showed us they were so generous with their knowledge and their research materials. I saw the original um, books of that show with the little drawings, with the sample fabrics, with the notes. And um, I mean, it was just an extraordinary experience. Mrs. Harris's transition in Paris was totally fascinating. Um, a, you've got Leslie Manville, who is probably one of the greatest actresses, and in my mind, I would do anything for her, but she's already given us the perfect starting point. So doing her as Mrs. Harris, the cleaning lady, was relatively simple. The problem when she gets to Paris, and obviously she's only come for the day, she hasn't even brought, you know, a washing bag, she's just come and she's going to stay with the accountant because his sister's away, so she can use his room. And he says, so you can borrow any, you know, about the same size, you can borrow her clothes, which is fine. But we then had to work out who this sister was because she's not scripted. So we decided she would be called Sandrine, and Sandrine has acquired quite a personality now. But the real problem was when we started to dress Leslie Manville in the fitting as Sandrine, she looked like Leslie Manville as Sandrine, as opposed to Mrs. Harris. So we decided Sandrine had bigger feet and the shoes didn't fit. So the dresses or the outfits are all from Sandrine's wardrobe. But Mrs. Harris keeps her nice little sensible lace-up polished shoes. It's always different with every actress how they react to a fitting. And Leslie is particularly, I would say, easy and very much sort of said whatever you think. We have worked together before, so it's not, I mean, only on Branford, which was lovely and Victorian and um, very different period, but we do know each other. Um, but she sort of said, and then I think she reacted well to the first things we put her in. And you kind of know immediately when you've gone wrong. So I'd always put the costumes on a stand, get a stand about the right size and do a sort of trial run for myself and photograph it. And often it works fine on the stand, but doesn't actually when you get to um, the person. But she, and she's so polite, she won't say anything until I say, I don't think that's working. She'd say, no, I don't, you know. And yesterday we had to do another little quick fitting with her um, because they wanted something a bit more dressy for the, uh, not Cabaret Royal, the uh, Boite Rouge. And um, I knew the one that was going to work, and she knew the one. She just said, There's, you know, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? This is it. And I think we've just got a really good rapport. But because she's so clever at doing the character, and she's not at all method, she has a completely normal real life, but once she is Mrs. Harris, she just is Mrs. Harris, and she kind of knows exactly what it is, um, you know, that will work for Mrs. Harris, clothes wise. We've been doing it by remote control and Zoom. Um, Isabel, I knew what I wanted, so I would send um, Corinne the images I'd found, and it's, it, it has to be a woman in black. All Dior's women, they all wear black, they're all very, very severe, and they all look marvellous, and there's tons of research, and that was really fun. So I sent Corinne some choice pieces, she sourced from the costume houses she knows really well. We did a Zoom fitting in Isabel's flat one Sunday, I think it was a Sunday evening, because she's really busy. And then we did a second one on a Saturday evening, again in her Paris flat, um, with uh, someone from one of the other costume houses who does brilliant alterations and has made for her a lot. And so it, I mean, it really worked. Um, obviously, they're not professional camera people, so they've set the computer up and sometimes it was against the light. So I couldn't always see as well as I would if I was, you know, in a room with someone. But actually, it worked. And she, I remember she looked into the camera and just said, I'm very happy, Jenny. And I just thought it was so wonderful. 
Vi, fantastic opportunity because you can get some real colour in. Um, and of course, I remember I had a Jamaican nanny when I was very little in the 50s, and she always wore gloriously colourful clothes. And again, there's lovely reference in photographs of the Caribbean, Jamaican, the people who came to England in the 50s to help us after the war. Um, and Ellen's, again, just joyous, so we could do a bit of joy on her. I had a long talk with Lambert. He was in some part of Austria uh, doing a concert. And um, he said, I s asked him, you know, what do you feel best in double-breasted or single? But double-breasted just seemed to be the better shape of suit for him and, and certainly works for the, for the Marquis. Um, he's very stylish. I've worked with Lambert also before, so it's a lovely relationship. And, and he was very sweet after the Dior show. He said, I got a lot of compliments on my suits. The problem with Jason is he goes smart quite easily, so to bring him down to being a bookie um, is quite a challenge. But of course, he decided he was a, you know, quite a snappy dresser bookie, so that was fine. And um, yeah, again, it's, you know, one good suit with a change of waistcoat, and then his sort of work clothes, which are just browner and the brown, um, like a warehouse coat, is very much what people on the racetracks wear. So it was nice, you could bring and the cap helps hugely as well. That just brings him more into that proper world. Because Jason easily goes aristocratic, which isn't the point in this film. I try and define the different areas with colour as much as anything. And London after the war was phenomenally drab and grey and brown. So that's quite easy. And if you just look at the photographs, there's a sort of rough tweediness about men and a sort of grittiness. Whereas Paris, seemed, even though they were occupied, seemed to be much chicer, much more um, fashionable. Everybody just looked sharper. So I went more for um, creams and blacks in a navy in Paris, but not obsessively. Otherwise, it, to me, that's not the way this film is. It's a real film about real people. So I wanted to keep it reasonably, you know, loose. The Big Deal show was a our sort of, um, yes, major opus on this, I think. Um, I did not design the dresses. Christian Dior designed them, except for two, which I did in honour of him, but to fulfil our story requirements. Um, but I did organise the making, and I had two amazing makers, John Bright of Cosprop and Jane Law, who um, they both make for me, um, or make for all the top stars. but. They both understand fashion. They love Dior. They're passionate about getting the shapes right. And we're also trying desperately to get the fabrics right. The weight of the Dior, because um, his stuff is really heavy. Uh, it was thick, the fabrics. And fabrics were thicker of them because they didn't have so much central heating. So people needed thicker clothes to stay warm, whereas now everything's so overheated, we can go around in sleeveless dresses in, in winter. But um, so the... It was very important to get the colours right. We actually dyed a lot of the fabrics to try and get the strength of the colours that we felt were correct. And we're going mainly off photographs, so. Um, and I just think they did an extraordinary job. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Click and watch our suggested video playlist right now for more entertaining videos. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.